Welcome back to the Biotechnology Lecture Series. This is the third lecture on the environmental biotechnology. In this lecture, we will cover pollution indicators and pollution control strategies with all of its steps, and at last we will discuss some possible exams questions. Pollution indicators are measurable parameters or substances used to assess the presence, concentration, and impact of pollutants in various environmental media, such as air, water, and soil. These indicators provide valuable information about the quality of the environment and help in understanding the extent and sources of pollution. Common indicators include measures of particulate matter, gases, chemicals, and biological elements that signify the health and integrity of the ecosystem. When we think of pollution, the air we breathe is a significant concern. We often measure the levels of particulate matter, PM such as PM2.5 and Penten, to assess the fine and coarse particles in the air. Additionally, ozone, O3 nitrogen dioxide, NOTWO sulfur dioxide, SOTU and carbon monoxide, CO are key indicators, giving insights into air quality and the sources of pollution. Shifting our focus to water pollution, indicators like dissolved oxygen, DO biochemical oxygen demand, BOD chemical oxygen demand, COD and PEACH help us gauge the health of water bodies. They provide vital information about the level of organic matter, the presence of pollutants, and the acidity or alkalinity of the water. When it comes to soil pollution, we pay attention to the presence of heavy metals, soil, organic carbon, and harmful agricultural chemicals like pesticides and herbicides. Monitoring these indicators helps us understand the contamination levels and potential risks associated with soil pollution. Pollution control strategies refer to a set of actions, policies, technologies, and practices designed to mitigate, reduce, or prevent pollution and its adverse effects on the environment, human health, and ecosystems. These strategies aim to regulate and manage the emissions of pollutants, improve waste management, promote sustainable resource use, and encourage environmentally friendly technologies. In battling air pollution, regulatory measures, such as setting and enforcing emission standards, play a critical role. Technological solutions, like air scrubbers, and catalytic converters in industries and vehicles significantly contribute to reducing harmful emissions. Moreover, promoting the use of clean energy sources like solar, wind, and hydroelectric power is pivotal for a cleaner future. In addressing water pollution, effective wastewater treatment is at the forefront. Processes like primary, secondary, and tertiary treatment ensure that wastewater is adequately purified before being released back into the environment. Sustainable agriculture practices, like reducing chemical use and implementing proper stormwater management, also go a long way in curbing water pollution. Lastly, to combat soil pollution, soil remediation methods like bioremediation and phytoremediation prove beneficial in removing pollutants from the soil. Proper waste management, including safe disposal of hazardous waste and emphasis on recycling and reuse is vital to prevent further soil contamination. In conclusion, understanding pollution indicators and implementing effective pollution control strategies are essential steps toward a cleaner, healthier environment. Here are some questions related to the topic. Number one, define pollution indicators and give an example of an air pollution indicator. Explain its significance in assessing air quality. Number two, explain the role of dissolved oxygen, DO, as a water pollution indicator and its importance in aquatic ecosystems. Number three, define heavy metals as soil pollution indicators and provide an example. Discuss the potential impact of soil contamination by heavy metals. Number four, Name and briefly explain two regulatory measures for controlling air pollution. Number five, 
briefly describe wastewater treatment as a pollution control strategy. Mention one primary stage of wastewater treatment and its purpose. Number six, explain one sustainable agriculture practice that helps in controlling agricultural pollution and promoting sustainable land use. Discuss its environmental benefits. That's all from the third lecture. See you in the next video for lecture number four.